Solar Wind um, is his name. He said, hey, guys, I want a home base station transceiver uh, receiver so I can listen till I am licensed. Need an antenna, too, but all for under $1,000 if possible. Any suggestions? I've asked the same question via email my local club and have never answered. So this is a... This is a good question um, because I know a lot of people. You know, we we when we when we when they get into ham radio, you know, you look at the costs involved, and then they look at the cost of kind of floating an HF station. And um, can you really put an HF station together for under a thousand dollars? And I'm going to say with all new equipment. I okay. mean, you could certainly do, you can certainly do it used. Um, mm -hmm. And we've talked about that. You know, finding used rigs or not, but. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. Let's see, you know, if, if you want to go new, you know, what can we do for new? So, okay. well, let's see what your numbers are and how close right. you to $2,000. I did a shopping list. So, um, uh, before, yeah, so we could kind of move things along. And uh, basically, you've got a choice between two HF rigs the ICOM IC718, which DX Engineering has for $649 or actually $624 with rebate or a Yesu FT891, and that is uh, 639 uh, currently. I would suggest the 891, personally. Mm -hmm. I've used both radios. Michael's owned both radios. Um, yes. Not only is it $10 cheaper, it's portable. Um, it's also, the design's probably about 12, 13 years newer than the 718. So. Yeah. Yeah, the 718 is a 20-year-old radio, and the... Um, the 891 is, here we go, 891 is approximately, what, five, six years old? Probably about so, six. Yeah, five or six. Yeah, yeah. So pretty close in price between the two. Um, so you could really go either way. I mean, I the 718 is probably a little more substantial. You know, I think it's it's because it's just because it, it'll certainly take a lot of abuse, uh, you know, whatever, you know, signal-wise, whatever you throw at it. And it right. has an excellent receiver. And the same with the 891. The 891, because it's it's got that compact form factor, you know, you really got to be a little more concerned about, about heating. But um, mm -hmm. other than that, you know, but I, I think, you know, the 891, you know, or either one, you know, either one, because so the wash, either one. Um, now, the downside with both of these is they do not have a tuner. So you're going to need some kind of a tuner. Yeah. Well, you don't know, really need a tuner for listening. Right? No, not for listening. Okay, we'll just put that out there. So you could you could um, save a couple dollars if you wanted to, you know, uh, and and if you had resonant antennas too, you wouldn't need a tuner. Right. Again, but for listening, so, for listening, so. right? I don't think you really need that. And then once you get your license, I think maybe that you can squirt a little bit on a tuner. Mm -hmm. But I really don't think yep. you would need it for listening. No, no, you wouldn't. Something like the. Um, yeah, uh, MFJ 949E would be $149. Mm -hmm. 949 uh, is an excellent tuner. Excellent tuner, a manual tuner, um, which is a good, which is will give you a lot of versatility. Mm -hmm. uh, power supply, you're going to need a power supply. MFJ's got a 25 amp power supply for 125 bucks. There you go. So, so th those three items are going to get you down up to about 900, 975, or 800 if you're not if you're gonna not use the um not you um you know leave out the tuner mm -hmm. uh so that's the rest you can use for an antenna um if you want to go inexpensive what i would recommend doing is something like the um you know uh build your own maybe a off-center fed dipole you can get the uh mfj four to one ballon for 45 bucks and then spend another 25 buck dollars on wire and, oh, it's probably uh, going to spend fifty on a wire. I'm just going to let you know. Holy <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I went and bought some wire at Home Depot the other day. I'm like, holy moly! It's up. <laughs> it's, it's. I mean, the price of copper is skyrocketed. So. Oh, it is. It is. But you know, I think if you play your cards right, that's something you can find. I mean, you can really find it anywhere, mm -hmm. um, and you don't need. You know, Home Depot electrical wire. You can get some 16 or 18 gauge hookup wire as long as you get enough of it, and that yep. works just fine. Yeah, yeah. And can so. you get speak and get enough speaker cable? That'll work too. That'll work too for receive only. It'll work really good. 
So, and then and then you'll need probably 50, 75 feet of cable RG8X. Mm -hmm. So another Eight, dollar foot. RG8X, you know, for 50 feet, you're probably spending 30 bucks. Yeah. You yeah. just get the Amazon stuff, really. It's not so. that expensive. So, yep. yeah. So you're at 1100 there, I think we figured, right? About 1100 And then there'll be tax, maybe a little yeah. bit on shipping. I don't, right. I don't think, I, I, th I th actually, I think DX Engineering pays the freight. So, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, about eleven hundred. Now and, another thing we talked about mm -hmm. was, uh, and I think someone asked the question: Is the uh, Zygu G ninety? Yes, yes. In okay. fact, that that came up in the chat. If if the Zygu G ninety is a good is a good choice, and yeah. um, really, it's the only difference I think between the Zygu G ninety and say the eight ninety one, it would be power level. The G ninety is a twenty watt radio. Yeah, mm -hmm. it has um, um while while the FT eight ninety one's got the more conventional, um, super heterodyne type receiver, double conversion receiver, the G ninety is all SDR, um, but the but the G ninety's also got a built in tuner. So actually, for four fifty, yeah, you've got an HF rig that you work that'll work gangbusters for receive. It's mm -hmm. got a built in tuner, and then all you need is a power supply right. and um, antenna. Now, one thing to consider, though, the G90 is it's not made for full duty cycle transmit. Uh, Correct. We were this earlier, and we say full duty cycle transmit. That means digital modes, either, you know, either the old-fashioned RIDI or mm -hmm. FT8 modes. Um, the thing will free. Uh, so now, get, as get, if you're just mm -hmm. listening, you haven't got your license yet. That's not a big deal. But eventually, yep. you're going to want to transmit because you're going to get a license, right? You're gonna get your like <laughs> so uh, you now the now, 20 watt radio. I'll tell you what, it sounds small, but um it's a little bit of a learning curve. But once you understand how it works, get a good Elmer who's very versed in uh URP, low power mm -hmm. radio, and especially with the how the solar cycle is beginning to pan out, I think you'll be just fine. Yeah. Two years ago, I would have said stay away from QRP for to a new person. <laughs> um, but as things, I mean, like the sun is actually starting to percolate. I think that this would be a good time if you're looking for a low cost investment. A G90 is not a bad idea, especially if you want to operate portable. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. um, the difference between 20 watts and 100 watts is a 6 dB or a 1S unit. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a good antenna system, you won't notice a difference. Exactly. I run in the field. I run fifty watts, and um, you know, fifty watts with a dipole is out. At, sometimes is like a thousand watts with a dipole. You know, it's it, it you're, it's just it's just crazy how you know yeah. people pick up on you. So. Uh, hey, my uh, hand once told me. Some days you can't get across town with a thousand watts. Some days you'll get across the world with five watts. Yes, that's kind of the way it is. But the the <laughs> ninety uh, general receive, you could if you want to listen to shortwave uh -huh. stations. Um, I, I think it's perfectly fine if you want to start working portable parks on the air, things of that nature. You know, it's a very good radio. So don't don't be afraid of something like that uh, as a first radio. But if you are going to operate QRP, make sure you got a good mentor. Mentor. Yeah, yeah. You know, a person and like an owner, right? <laughs> so basically, we could go. You know, uh, G ninety um, accessories, power supply, mm -hmm. six. You know, seven hundred dollars right. or eleven $1 hundred dollars if you went with a more conventional radio. So absolutely. So, so. Yeah, it gives you a couple of good choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but hey, you know what? The best radio is is the one that gets you on the air. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the questions. If you keep sending them, we'll keep answering them. Feel free to leave your questions and comments down in the comment area below. I'll filter through them, and who knows, yours may end up on our next Your Questions Answered live stream. Our Q&A live streams happen on the first Thursday of the month, starting at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. I hope to see you there. For more articles and information, along with a full line of VHF and UHF antennas for sale, please check out my website at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. Check us out on Patreon. Patrons gain access to exclusive content, and our patrons help keep the mission alive. 
That's over on patreon.com slash kb9vbr antennas. Well, give us that thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if it's your first time here. That's your best way to be notified when a new video is released. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.